Welcome to Peak TV. I'm Niamh Dagan, Executive Director of Peak Asset Management, and we've got Mark Eames, Technical Director of Magnetite Mines. Mark, good to meet. Uh, likewise, Niamh, it's a pleasure. Mark, you've got a great CV, especially in the uh, mining background. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, a little bit unusually. I've worked for uh, in iron ore for Rio Tinto, BHP and Glencore. So I've had a great, a great opportunity to get to know iron ore mines and markets over a long period of time. I've been to a lot of uh, iron ore mines in many different countries and I've uh, spent time in markets. And I found that a, a fundamental understanding is key to actually working out what's going on in iron ore. So most observers, for example, are pretty pessimistic about iron ore prospects and have been for some time. But the fundamentals, in my view, tell a very different story. We've seen for some time now that the majors have been underinvesting in iron ore, while China's demand has been very strong. So markets have tended to defy expectations and post some really strong results. And Mark, Razorback, how does that stack up as a development opportunity based on some of the projects that you've come across? It's a, a rare combination of low capital, high grade and long life. Um, usually, like a lot of things uh, you come across, you only get uh, one or two out of three. But uh, Razorback ticks all the boxes. Um, it's an exceptionally large resource, which gives us long life. Uh, we found a processing route, which gives us a very high grade product, around 68% FE. Um, and it's also, uh, we've been able to work on it so that we've got their capital cost down to something that's uh, competitive and accessible. And Mark, just want to talk a little bit about the numbers. Uh, strong numbers coming out just recently of your PFS. Uh, do you think it will make the project attractive to investors? We believe so. It's always hard for investors to compare pre-feasibility study results. And the reason is because standards of work and, and the way in which the results are presented uh, vary widely. In our case, um, we've uh, used some of the best uh, iron ore processing engineers in the world uh, we've done a very thorough and rigorous assessment of the resource and the costs of development. And uh, so we have actually worked through a methodical and systematic process. We started by upgrading our geological resource. Um, so we've got a large proportion of indicated ore. Uh, next thing is we actually did mining studies. So we've actually declared a maiden ore reserve, um, which is obviously gives us a great basis uh, for mining. And then just as importantly, we've worked very carefully to actually develop a stage development with a relatively low cost entry so that we can start up this uh, very large resource and start producing product and get to market uh, at a fairly accessible price. So the way that's turned out is the uh, capital cost for the project is less than half a billion dollars for a capacity of around three million tonnes of high grade product. And uh, our development timeline allows us to get into production um, in 2024. So we think that combination of uh, numbers is pretty good. Where that uh, plays out is when we actually ran the numbers and looked at the profitability of the business, we're able to generate a post-tax IRR of 20%, which in my experience for, for well-engineered projects is uh, exceptional. That's exceptional, a uh, 20% IRR, um, fantastic, really, really good job. And, and just talk about the grades because we're seeing the iron ore grade uh, premiums actually increasing. Uh, tell us a little bit more about what you're seeing. We've, we're seeing here um, two things coming together. So we've got a, a long-term trend on the supply side of declining grades. So if you look at the major producers in the Pilbara or even Brazil, what we've seen is a lot more material come onto the market at relatively lower grades. You know, the benchmark price is quoted at 62%. There's actually only one product in the market out of Australia that's actually uh, available in any volume that's more than 62%. Everything else is less. Um, the main source of high grade these days is, is either Brazil or a small quantity of uh, processed ore. And so that's one part of the equation is that grades have been declining on the supply side. Um, and that means that uh, on the demand side, the steel makers um, have to spend a lot more money on expensive coking coal to melt out the impurities, and it makes their blast furnaces a lot less productive. And lastly, it actually generates much more emissions per tonne of steel. So in other words, it's much uh, more environmentally unfriendly as well. So that combination of things has meant that uh, high-grade premiums have uh, changed massively in the last five years. So we've typically seen the, um, the gap between uh, the 58% ore, which is the sort of lower-grade products out of Australia, and the 65%, which is the highest regularly quoted grade uh, for fines in the marketplace. 
that gap is is normally about um, anything from uh, twenty to thirty dollars. What we've seen uh, in the last few months, uh, and indeed it's a trend which has been going on for some years now, is that's widened enormously. So the gap now is up to about $110, which uh, given the uh, price is 200, that's certainly strong. But what it really shows is the returns for high grade producers are dramatically different than the returns that low grade producers are going to see. Everybody's doing well, of course, uh, at today's price, but nevertheless, the place in the market you want to be is high grade. And where that will play out, we believe, through uh, as the markets evolve, is the higher grade prices uh, are much less volatile than low grade prices, which is kind of what you'd expect. You'd expect that steel mills generally are going to favour the higher grade products through the cycle. And so we think over time what that offers to Razorback is um, significantly higher prices than the 62% uh, average, but also more stable prices over time. So I think that's something which investors can I uh, feel very confident about in terms of uh, where we where we sit in the products. Absolutely, that uh, investors like us want to see high prices. And, and I know we touched about this, but the low capital and the long life uh, focus for MGT, um, what does it actually mean uh, in the context of the iron ore project and uh, also from your experience? So what we saw, you know, if we go back to the last iron ore boom, um, which sort of came to an end effectively in 2015, was uh, in, in the period from 2000 to 2015, we saw a lot of new mines um, start up around the world um, in some far-flung mines in places like Africa. Uh, a number of uh, local producers started up. But what we found was a lot of them that didn't have the uh, the, the long life um, of their competitive ore bodies have effectively gone out of business. Um, and so, and, and then there were some other projects floating around that had very high capital cost and those actually uh, didn't make it far enough down the development pathway to actually get into business. So what we essentially saw was by the end of 2016, 2017, um, almost all of the new suppliers had effectively stopped uh, producing for a variety of combinations. And a lot of the promised production from places like Simandu, for example, in Guinea, never made it onto the market. So for us, what's important is we think the combination of accessible capital a reasonable development timeline and uh, a, 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 a very disciplined approach to development means we'll get into the market and we'll stay in the market through the cycle. And that's been our focus as a business. We've actually been able to demonstrate in the PFS that we can uh, keep going uh, as long as we get uh, prices over about $50, which is essentially means we can uh, make uh, – make good money while the uh, sun shines and we can still survive through uh, periods of more difficult prices and still generate cash flow for our shareholders. And Mark, you recently completed a, a really strongly uh, a campaign in terms of the placement and you've got some really notable uh, institutions I- inside. So you're, you're, you're fully funded uh, straight to DFS, which is very, very exciting. What improvements are, are you working on? Also, what, why is it investors should be buying the stock? What are you most excited about right now? So we've still got some refinement to do on the mining side, which uh, for us is really exciting. So if we look at the pre-feasibility study results, um, our ore body average um, grade and mass recovery um, is is reasonable, but uh, we think we can do a lot better. Now, when we went through the pre-feasibility study, we were effectively mining in most of our cases at resource grade. So in other words, there's a great opportunity to um, selectively mine the ore body or use technologies like ore sorting to dramatically increase our our head grade, increase plant throughput, overall efficiency of the process will increase, and so our costs will go down. And that's a great opportunity for us. So one of the things we're doing now is we're actually taking our core library and putting it through detailed, high-resolution metallurgical testing. And what that's going to do is actually give us a much finer uh, differentiation of grade through the resource and allow us to look at selective mining much more carefully. And we're actually in parallel with that um, doing some more drilling, which is going to uh, expand our knowledge of the resource. There's a very promising part of the resource called Iron Peak, which is uh, currently not sitting in reserve. And so it just needs a small amount of drilling to upgrade it. That's looking very promising. So that'll again add to both tons and we think uh, give us improved head grade. And then we're actually working on de-risking the project as well. So uh, we're commencing a program of water drilling uh, in the areas we've identified that uh, 
post uh, the groundwater we intend to use. Uh, we're working through a process of consultation and discussion with the uh, landholders, which is uh, going well. And uh, last but definitely not least, um, we're improving and generating better relationships with stakeholders. And in particular, um, we, we intend to work very closely with the uh, Nadjuri people who are the traditional owners uh, in the area where the mine's located. And uh, our intent is to work both uh, cooperatively and fairly to generate outcomes that are, uh, work for both sides. Mark, we're big supporters. So thanks very much for joining us here at PTV. It's a pleasure, Eve. Thank you for the invitation.